The cat is there. You. Because we believe that Jesus is building His yeah. church. Hello friends, thank you for joining us for another amazing service. We are Jesus Church and we're all about knowing Jesus and making friends. So super excited that you've joined us and it's going to be a great service. It's been a great, great start of this year. We've had some guest speaker, Pastor Sox. We've had a powerful theme around uh, Prayed For. We've had Vision Sunday. We've really, really had a great time in church. And as you guys know, our theme for the year is Focus. Hashtag Focus 2022. And it's going to be a great year and I'm super excited. And yeah, thank you so much for joining us for the service. Make sure if you're here for the first time, you've subscribed, like, uh, press the comment section, leave us a comment and share guys, Let's share this content. You never know who can watch this and it will really just change their life. So something as simple as sharing can really, really make a difference in somebody's life. So yeah, it's still early in the service so you can quickly still be able to share this. If you're watching on Facebook, you can also just send share, share, share. If you're on YouTube, just share the link on your WhatsApp contacts and let everybody come and join this wonderful community. I love being part of this church. Uh, we're all about knowing Jesus and making friends. I mean, wow, and you want to be a part of such a great vision. So yeah, thank you so much to everybody. And yeah, we're gonna go straight into offering and they're offering and go into the word. So yeah, I hope you guys are excited. Take out your journals, be ready to learn and open up your heart. It's gonna be a great service. So yeah, be blessed guys. So yeah, we're gonna quickly just go into a time of giving, worshiping God with our offering and with tithes. And I cannot, you know, start by without saying thank you to everybody that's part of this family. And those of you guys who support us, who watch our services, who pray for us. Uh, your generosity has been able to keep us functional and being able to help us grow. Uh, purchasing of equipment, recording equipment, sound equipment. Uh, very soon we'll be able to have our own recording studio uh, where we have all the equipment to just be able to record our worship sessions. So that wouldn't happen if it wasn't for your generosity and your giving. So thank you so much. We appreciate you and God bless you for being faithful in your giving. And I know that you are blessed going in and you are blessed going out. And I just have this small thought I want to share with you as we're going into a time of offering. And if you know that verse in John 3.16, which most of us learn from Sunday schools or kids' church or I'm not sure what you call it in your, uh, your church that you went to. Uh, there's the verse in John 3.16, For God so loved the world that He gave. And I mean, it continues, but I think that first portion is pretty much the, the center or the premise of what I want to share with you, is that God so loved the world that He gave. And uh, I mean, I was just thinking about it, like giving is a heart issue. And I think that's what I want to talk about today is that giving is a heart issue. It's not a mind issue, it's a heart issue. Uh, God so loved the world that he gave. So it started with the heart, it started with loving, it started with a decision, it started with a choice. Uh, as you guys know, love is as much a question of uh, the will as it is of the emotion. If you're willing to love somebody, you can. It's a commitment, it's a choice. You choose to love and if you choose to love God, you give to God. If you choose to love someone, you give yourself to him. If you choose to love the church, you give towards the church. So it's a heart issue. It's a conscious, it's a conscious commitment that you make within your heart. When your when your heart is convicted uh, to do that certain thing, that's what giving is all about. And the, the reason why this is so powerful is because in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 13, it reads as follows. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am a noisy gong or clanging cymbal. And if I prof if I uh, have prophetic powers and understand all ministry, um, all mysteries and all knowledge, then if I have all faith as to remove mountains but have not love, I am nothing. I like this one. Verse 3, if I give away all I have, if I offer all I have, and if I even deliver my body to be burned, but have not love, I again, or rather I gain nothing. And he continues to talk about what love is and what love isn't. So what we see from the scripture is that giving is a question of the heart, not of the mind. It's the question of the heart. It's not just about what I do, but it's about the conviction in which I do it. So as we give today, I want to encourage us. Let us not just give as a way of... This is what we do in church. No, no, no. 
if you're doing that, the Bible says, I gain nothing. It is meaningless. It is not going to reap you reward. It needs to be a conviction. It needs to be in our heart. That's why we need to set aside right from the beginning of the week what we're going to give on Sunday because we're not just fulfilling a religious exercise. We are fulfilling an action of love. It's a heart issue. So we can't give void of heart. We cannot give void of commitment. We cannot give void of emotion. Love is as much the question of the will as it is of the emotion. If you're willing to love someone, you can. I want to encourage you. The banking details are on the screen. When you're giving your tithe, giving your offering, just remember you're doing this because you love God. You're doing this because you love His church. And you believe you're doing this because you believe that this work should progress and continue. And when you're doing that, you shall receive much gain. And it doesn't have to be financial gain. It's gain in fulfillment. It's gain in purpose. It's gain in conviction and doing the things that you believe that God has called you to do to advance and forward His work. Abba Dad, in the name of Jesus, I want to thank you for everyone that's giving. Thank you for everyone that's tithing. Thank you so much for everyone that you've given the conviction to give. Not just the act, but the conviction. Not just the doing, but the love, um, the commitment. So that they don't just do it once, but they do it over and over and over again. Thank you so much, Lord God, and I pray that you bless them in Jesus' name. We pray, amen. I mean, there's something very powerful in there that if you do it out of conviction, you can be able to do it out of discipline. But if you don't do it out of conviction, it will always feel like a burden. And tonight, I don't want you to give from a burden. I want you to give out of conviction. Rather not give if you're giving out of obligation. So, quickly going to go into the word. And I hope your hearts are ready. I want you to just prepare your heart. As you have given, it's time for you to receive. God bless you. Enjoy the word. Hello, Jesus Church friends and family. How are you guys doing, man? I hope everybody's having a great Sunday, uh, Monday, Tuesday, whatever day of the week it is that you're watching this on. Shout out in the chat. Tell us how you're doing. Tell me how you're doing. How are you feeling? How's the beginning of the year been? We are literally in the second month of 2022 and God has just been amazing. God has just had his face shining on us. Uh, we just got out of a fast a couple of weeks earlier. And man, God has just been giving us amazing things, amazing vision. And yeah, last speaking about vision, last Sunday was Vision Sunday. And Melissa came and just casted vision. I'm sure that most of you guys out there know. Uh, but for those of you guys that do not know what the vision of 2022 is, do me a favor. I'm going to clap my hands, check this out, and I'm going to see you right after this. Already? My question to you is, who are you focusing on? What or where is your focus on? What's difficult about us focusing on Jesus Christ? If you ever ask yourself on where is my focus? Where do I put my focus at? Is it Jesus? The Son of God? The Bible says in the book of Mark, Matthew chapter 6, verse 24, that it's impossible to serve two masters, for either he will hate one and love the other. How do we lose our focus? In the year of 2022, let us refocus back to God and fix our eyes on Jesus Christ, the author and the perfecter of our faith. Well, friends, as you can see, the vision for 2022 here at Jesus Church is focus, man. Focus is the word of the year. Yes, that is what we are on this year. Well, um, as soon as Menelisi said that to us, as soon as the vision was casted last week during Vision Sunday, listen, if you haven't checked out Vision Sunday, please do me a favor, guys. Go back and check out last week's sermon. It will bless your socks off, I guarantee you. Menelisi just broke down focus in such an amazing way there's so much nuggets from you there it's a breakdown of the 2080 rule go check it out for yourself it will definitely bless you so as soon as he said this right when you when we first sat down and discussed amongst ourselves as jesus church leaders that the vision for 2022 is focus as given to us by the holy spirit i went straight into my word and i started flipping pages and looking as to what the bible says about focus and i also went to the dictionary 
And interestingly enough, here's what I found that, that, that the dictionary said. It said that focus is the state or quality of having or producing clear visual definition. I'm going to read that again. It says that fo- the focus is the state or quality of having or producing a clear visual definition. So two words stuck out for me in that statement. The first one was clear and the second one was visual. So what does this tell us? It tells us that focus has to do with vision. Focus has to do with vision. So I came to the understanding as well, like, so check this out, right? I am a graphic designer by profession, right? So before I design anything on my computer or before I write anything down or draw anything down on paper as to what I want to create, I first have to visualize it in my head as to what does this have to look like when it is complete and presented to the world. So before it actually manifests physically, I have to visualize and have an idea of what is it that I want to see. And I kind of found that that's exactly how God works with us, is that before we have an idea of what we want, God actually puts us in, puts it inside of us. And then we kind of have that inclination or desire to run after it. So this got me thinking, friends, and this got me to understanding this, that the things we focus on in our life have to come from our focus on God. The things that we focus on in our lives have to come from our focus on God. And there's one particular man in the Bible who really did this very well. One particular icon in the Bible who really um, embodied the aspect of focusing on God throughout his entire life. And that was King David. Well, for lack of a better word, let's just say David, because this is more about before he became king of Israel, as opposed to when he was already in the in the throne of kingship. How do we know this? Because in Psalms 21 and um, Psalms 23, there's a very beautiful um, alliteration there that David actually wrote, which is very beautiful. So this psalm was written by David, um, taken from the time when he was actually looking after his father's sheep. So him being in the wilderness, just taking care of his father's sheep, looking after them, he could see a certain aspect of himself in the sheep. And you could see a certain aspect of God inside of himself being the shepherd that looks after the sheep. So with this understanding, David puts pen to paper and he writes this beautiful psalm. And he says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. These are things that him as a shepherd used to do for the sheep. So he will lead the sheep. He will direct the sheep. He will lead the sheep to greener pastures when the sheep needed water. So he saw himself in the sheep that he was actually looking after. And that's going to draw my attention further to looking at what do the sheep symbolize. So before we get there, check this out. The sheep is actually a very, very, very simplistic animal. You know, it is totally, completely dependent on the master for food. It is totally, completely dependent on its ship, its shepherd for, for water. Whenever the sheep needs to eat something, it's dependent on the master to provide it for the sheep. It's dependent on the master to provide it anything that it needs to survive. It's dependent on the master to protect it even in situations of harm. It's dependent on the master's understanding of what is right for it in order for it to survive. And I came to the understanding of something else as well, that the sheep is a very simple animal. See, sheep do not have any kind of self-defense mechanism. They cannot defend themselves. So when sheep are in the wilderness by themselves, they're actually very vulnerable. They've got no teeth, as we know the lions do. They've got no claws. They've got no... They basically have nothing to defend themselves. They rely completely on the shepherd. And this is what this was the analogy that David was writing to, saying that the Lord is my protector. The Lord is my provider. I rely completely on the Lord. He's even so Lord over my life that he provides my peace. And the sheep being so simplistic, it kind of made me understand something. And it kind of made me realize what the sheep actually symbolized. The sheep represented the simplistic focus of what God has in front of us to focus on in this season. The very same way that David was not trying to be king when he was looking after the sheep. He was just simply focusing on the sheep. The very same way that he wasn't comparing himself to other people. He was just focusing on the sheep. And it is is through him focusing on the sheep 
that he actually starts focusing on God. It is through him looking at the sheep and looking how the sheep behave and looking at himself as a shepherd that he actually experiences God in the wilderness simply by sitting there and taking care of his father's sheep. He has continuous encounter after encounter with God simply by being there. We know that he went even further in the wilderness by learning how to play the harp. We know that in the wilderness he learned how to kill lions and bears in protection of the sheep, just like the, that, just like the Lord protects us from certain things to protect us as his sheep. The Bible says, my sheep, God says in the Bible, my sheep hear my voice. So we see these continuous descriptions where God is continuously um, referring to us as sheep and him being the shepherd. Jesus described himself as the shepherd. You know, we see this all throughout the scripture and we understand that literally we are classified as sheep in certain aspects and places in the Bible. Now, David simply sat there and looked after his father's sheep. He was completely focused on just that one task. He wasn't trying to do a whole lot of things. And through him focusing on this one task, he developed everything that he needed for kingship. Friends, how many times do we look at people out there every single time? Friends who are close to us doing all kinds of things. And we abandoned what we know that this is what we're supposed to do in this season. And we run after things that will give us a sense of achievement because of what we saw other people do. See, Lizzie spoke about um, things that are able to draw our attention, that we are focusing on this particular thing, but something catches our attention and all of a sudden our focus is gone. God has given you something this season, my friend, to focus on. God has given you something in the season to put your entire energy in because that is what's going to yield the most results at the end of this year. And the trick is to find out what that thing is. It doesn't need to be a whole bunch of things. Sometimes God lets us focus on one thing that will yield the most results. I want to show you something real quick. See, the logo that we're using right now is Jesus Church for Focus, right? I'm going to put it on your screen right now. The logo that we are using right now as Jesus Church for the Focus um, series. If you look at that logo, you will see something there in the middle called a magnifying glass. Now, what a magnifying glass is, is a little piece um, that is uh, on a little piece of uh, uh, pole, which is a little round glass, that if you put on a certain area, it magnifies that entire place. So it highlights or focuses that one area. Now, the very interesting, the interesting thing about a magnifying glass is this, is that if you take a magnifying glass and you hold it out in front of you, what the magnifying glass does is that it harnesses the power of the sun. So it takes the entire UV rays and it focuses it on one central point where it's facing. And the interesting thing about this is the closer the magnifying glass gets to a certain object, what do I mean? The, the more focused the magnifying glass gets to a certain object, it is able to take the entirety of the sun's rays that it's able to catch and focus it on one central point. And friends, here's what we're doing in certain seasons. We stand there with our magnifying glass, looking at what everybody is doing, and we try to take everything that we know how to do and try to focus it on central points. When God is saying, focus on the thing that I've given you to do in this season, close to it. Let my strength and my power that I've given inside of you, which is represented in the sun, get you to get the most result out of this. I hope you're getting what I'm saying. Now, here's another interesting thing about our focus logo. If you look inside this magnifying glass, you see there's an O, which actually represents the word on. And in the middle of that says Jesus. So it's the magnifying glass around it, which represents complete focus. And then when you get into the magnifying glass, when you refine the focus, you get the O. And the closer you get even within, it says Jesus. What this logo was meant to say to you guys in this season, friends, is let's focus on Jesus in 2022. He is the only one that knows what we need to do. He's the only one that knows the plans that he has for us. See, the Bible says that we see in part and hear in part. So sometimes we do not, God doesn't completely expose the plans that he has for us because in him hiding certain things from us, he's saying, focus on me. Because if you don't focus on me, you will not discover what I have for you in this season. So let's go on further. So through David just simply focusing on God, God makes him king. 
simply by him being in the wilderness looking after his sheep the spirit of god locates him the spirit of god leaves saul who was king over israel at that particular time and it goes on to david god goes to a prophet named samuel and he says why are you crying over saul who actually had just been disqualified from kingship and he says go to jesse's house who's actually the father of david and anoint a man that i have chosen god actually describes david as a man after his own heart what made david what made god describe david as a man after his own heart simple david only had his focus on god so god makes him king because god knew that this man is so focused on me that he would do everything that I tell him to do. He would be obedient to what I say. See, elevation simply located David and found him because he was obedient to what God was telling him to do in the season that he was in. Simply just focusing on God. We see what actually happened to David the moment that he actually took his eyes off God, which happened when he was a king. And in the season where kings would go to war, David stayed behind in the palace. And that's when he fell into temptation and he slept with Bathsheba and you know the story of what happened Bathsheba becomes pregnant but the point of the story is the moment that David took his focus off God things started things started, started getting messed up so we know what happens juxtaposed to what happens when he was focused on God now let's go a bit further so God makes him king right God anoints David to be king and you know Samuel goes and he goes to Jesse's house and he finds um, Jesse and Jesse calls all of his brothers except David. David is still in the, in the field looking after his father's sheep. So much so that after Samuel tried to um, anoint all the sons of, David, of Jesse to be king, God was saying that these are not the ones. These are not the ones that I've chosen. Because Samuel actually looked at the sons of Jesse and because of their stature, thought that some of them were actually meant to be king. But God said, I don't look at the outward appearance. What is this saying, friends? God is literally saying, it's not, we need to stop looking at what other people are doing, how other people look like and what they're doing, and start focusing on what we are called to do. David is simply in the wilderness. He's not concerned about what his brothers are doing. He's not concerned the fact that his brothers are out at war with so, which actually would mean that they were the best candidates. Even their physique, as Samuel looks and says, surely these are the ones that God has chosen. But no, God goes and looks at somebody who has complete and total focus on him. So God rejects everybody that looked like the right candidate for kingship. And God goes for the one who actually has his heart focused on him. What am I saying, friends? That sometimes... Focusing on what God has taught you to do in the season that you're doing may not make sense. Because you may be doing something that makes you feel like you're wasting time. Yet you know in your heart of hearts that God has said, focus on this. Continue working here. Even if they pay you like a janitor, but they work you like the CEO. Continue focusing on this because this is more than just about the finances right now this is more than just about what you're earning right now i've put you here so that you can not only just develop the skills that you need but you can also develop the character that you need for where i'm taking you and it may not look like what you want it to look like right now but it looks the very same way that i want it to look in this season see the very same way that david was learning how to, how to look after the sheep is the very same thing that david would need to learn how to look after his kingship as king the very same concept applied it was just the same principle on a lower level that he would need to learn so that he could apply it on a higher level i hope you're getting what i'm saying to you friends there's so many things that David learned when he was in the wilderness by focusing on God. He learned how to kill lions and bears in the wilderness simply by protecting the sheep. So what was happening? God was literally imparting his character inside of him by giving him practical things to do and showing him that I have empowered you to every, for everything that you're going to do when you get to the place of kingship. Because without you knowing that you can kill a lion and a bear, David, you do not have the confidence to stand up in front of Goliath and know that you can defeat him. Not because of your strength, but because of my spirit that is within you, because you are focusing on me. Oh, friends, I hope you get it. Let's, but let's move on. Let's, I don't want to waste too much time on this, but this is such an amazing story. So 
David, after all of this, David is anointed to be king. And after that, you know, uh, the Bible said that the spirit of the Lord left uh, Saul and it went unto David when he was anointed to be king. And, uh, you know, uh, once he was anointed to be king, uh, an evil spirit actually went into Saul and Saul started, became, become, started, started becoming tormented by an evil spirit sent by the Lord. You may sh be shaken by this, but that how can God send an evil spirit? But here's the thing, that there was still purpose in what God was doing in Saul. Because see, the tormenting spirit that was tormenting Saul actually created access for David to enter into Saul's service. How did this happen? Here's what happened. So Saul's servants saw that Saul was actually being tormented by an evil spirit. And they said so to Saul, let us go find a man who's talented in playing the, in playing the harp. So that when the spirit comes and attacks you, the man can play the harp and then the spirit can leave. And Saul said, go and find him. And one of Saul's servants says, I know a man who's skilled at playing the instruments, who is a good warrior and who is good looking. Now, here's my question. When did this man see David? See, friends, you don't know who's looking at you. You don't know that in your season of doing what looks like is not producing results. You don't know who's paying attention to what you're doing. There may be people right now having conversations about you in areas of influence. There may be people in your company who are looking at you and observing you and you don't know it. And they're having conversations about you in areas of places of influence. And when the time is right, God will make way for you. See, the Bible says that a man's gift makes way for him. David was gifted in playing the harp and that made way for him to get into the service of Saul. I can share a story about, um, that happened to me a couple of years ago uh, when I entered into a new company as an intern. And I was in a time in my life where I really needed a full-time job, but the only job that was available at the season was interning. It was an internship. And I remember every single day going to the office, sitting in my little cubicle and looking at the designers and looking at the executive creative directors and going to them every day and asking them, what are you working on? And they would show me what they're working on, saying I have a deadline on this. And I would tell them, like, can I do the very same thing that you did in a different way? And let's compare and see which one is the best one. Let's compare and see if you like mine, you can use it. If not, I have the experience. See, and I went there and I did that. And within a month, see, the offices in that building were lost. In the creative industry, most of you, most offices are like fishbowls. You know, they're clear and transparent. And there was a day when I would look, when I was looking into one of the offices of the CEOs, and they were looking at me, having a discussion about me. This was like in 2017, I think. And they were having a discussion about me um, in that office. And I kept on wondering what was happening. I thought I was in trouble. Lord and behold, one of the guys come out and say, hey, let's go for lunch. On my way to lunch with him, he explains to me like they're saying, um, you know, they've been watching you, they've been seeing what you've been doing and they really want to give you a full-time job. My friends, this is what I'm saying to you that, see, I was just trying to get experience, but I didn't know who was keeping an eye on me. And when the time came, because I was obedient to what I was trying to do, which was simply just getting experience, God opened the door. Sometimes we try to make things happen out of our own abilities when God said, I've got this. Sometimes we try to make things out of our own strength when God is simply saying, just focus on what I've given you. It may look like nothing. It may look like simplicity, but just focus on it. For me personally, I know that one thing that I just need to focus on is my marriage and my work and just being faithful to what God has said and everything else he will take care of. So let's go further in the story. So David in this particular area, he's in service to Saul. You know, he's looking at, he's playing the instrument whenever Saul gets the evil spirit. But here's what the Bible says. So David was the youngest. So 1 Samuel 17, 14, 16 says, David was the youngest of three older sons. The three older sons followed Saul to war. See, it will make sense that they would be king because they were following Saul. So they followed Saul to war. But the Bible says that David went back and forth from Saul's palace to tend to his father's sheep. 
he went back, he kept on going back and forth from the palace to look after his father's sheep. And at first glance, I used to think that this man, that David was very responsible, which he was. But what if the reason why David would go back and forth was because he would experience God's presence in the wilderness when he's looking after the sheep? What if this is David saying that, Lord, I know that you've exalted me now that I'm in the palace. I've got entrance and access and servitude in the palace. I'm serving the king. I don't need to go back, but I choose to go back because I need your presence. Friends, let me ask you a question. Can God elevate you and you stay continuously plugged into his presence in places of silence where he's called you to focus on him? See, the thing about elevation sometimes is that it causes us to forget what God has there in the first place. Sometimes, as God elevates you and people begin to applaud you, we become deaf of the voice of God. See, and sometimes the enemy won't, if he cannot stop you from getting into a certain place, he will push you into it prematurely. Sometimes you get into a place of elevation and people start applauding you and you forget. See, it's very hard to hear me over this. It's very hard to hear God's voice over this. We need, my friend, I want to ask you, can God elevate you? Can God promote you? And you continuously being faithful in servitude and humility and time and devotion to him. Because above kings and CEOs and businessmen and promotions and financial breakthrough, God just wants people that will be close to him that he can use in those areas of excellent, um, of elevation. So David keeps going back and forth because of his father's sheep. And here's another point that I want to share with you. First Samuel 17, 15 to 17 says, Now Jesse, who is the father of David, said to his son David, Take these ephah, roasted grain, and these ten loaves of bread, and take them to your brothers, and hurry and check on them in the camp. So one day, this is one of the days that David kept going back and forth from the palace to his father's um, 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 sheepfold. One day he's back there looking after his father's sheep. And it is at this time that his father said, take this bread, take these roasted um, nuts, take this cheese, take it to the, to the general of the army and check on your brothers. And it is at this point when he gets to the battlefield to check on his brothers, that Goliath comes forth and starts throwing insults at the Israel army. See, and we know that if David had not been at that particular place in time, he would not have defeated Goliath, which then would have not allowed him to get another promotion. Friends, because of his dedication, not just to his father, but to the presence of God in the wilderness, in the lowly place, in the place with the sheep, is what positions him to be called by his father to the place of battle and where he defeats Goliath. If he had said to himself, I'm just going to stay in the palace. Now God has promoted me. I don't need to focus on him anymore because I've got my promotion. He would have disqualified himself of the next promotion. Matthew 6, 33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his presence. And his right, sorry, seek ye. I should, I should say presence, but I'm not going to change the Bible. The word of God said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. But here's what we tend to do, friends. We tend to sort those scriptures around. We tend to put that all these things will be added unto you before the seek ye first the kingdom. We tend to run after materialistic things or applause from people, and we forget the first word that God has told us. Seek my kingdom first. And what is God saying by seek my kingdom first? Seek my way of doing these things. Seek the way of heaven. Seek the way that I want you to go through. And the only way that you can seek them is by focusing on me. So in the year of 2022, friends, let us go back to our first love. Let's go back to the place of just focusing on him. See, there's nothing wrong with setting vision. 
We should do that. There's nothing wrong with having dreams and aspirations. We should do that. There's nothing wrong with admiring other people that are achieving. In fact, if you notice the last couple of days, we celebrated um, Guanele and Sne um, for their jobs. There's nothing wrong with admiring them and, um, and applauding them. But just like they focused on what they were doing and God promoted them, we also need to do the same thing. Let's focus together. See, the beautiful thing that I love about Jesus Church is that the see, this, this, this vision that we are on of focus is one that is so applicable to everybody. See, we are not trying to have a church where people are in it, but they are not experiencing the very same elevation as we are. God is blessing us with lights and production and people and resources. But we want that for you too. We need you to have a vision for yourself too. And we are saying, let us all, including us, focus on God and let him be the one that orders our steps. Let him be the one that directs us. Let him be the one that determines where we go. Let him be our shepherd. Let's focus on the sheep, friends. I hope that somebody got help today. I hope that uh, you guys heard everything that I said. Listen, again, please go back and check out uh, Vision Sunday from last week's Sunday where the vision was launched. And, uh, you know, Melissa just spoke about the 2080 rule. I can't break it down as well as he can, but I guarantee you go back there and check it out for yourself. And friends, thank you so much for tuning in. We are Jesus Church. We love you. Have a great, great week ahead. How if it's Monday, Tuesday, or whatever day of the week is, have a great one. Enjoy it. We love you and God bless you. What a great word, guys. Wow, 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 wow. The one thing I really appreciate about this church is that we are always being fed. And I think uh, we made a decision earlier this year to just be very, very conscious around being deliberate about teaching God's word. So I'm so grateful that that is carrying through. Thank you so much for being part of what God is doing. I really hope you took a lot of notes, that you took a lot of learnings. And guys, remember, we always need to put these things into practice. I want to encourage you uh, tomorrow we're going to be having a discussion our live online groups every mondays we have them at seven o'clock on instagram so i encourage you to be part of that community we're going to discuss today's word ask questions so yeah I invite people for that you can just literally just go on instagram and join us for part of that community and as you know every friday we have friends that pray seven o'clock as well also in instagram you can literally just log in and be part of our prayer session let us be part of the church community guys it's not just about the sunday service but it's about the community of being able to share god's word together being able to communicate and just chat have conversations together and read the word together so if you haven't Make sure you do like, subscribe, uh, comment, and as well, you may have missed some sermons earlier on this year, which were great. So I want to encourage you after this, just go back and watch another sermon with a theme that you think would help and build you and resonates with you. I'm sure you'll find something that will change your life as we continue with this theme of focus this year. So yeah, have a great week. We love you and we pray that God will bless you this week and be productive and see you tomorrow at seven o'clock. This is Jesus Church and we're all about knowing Jesus and making friends. Take care.